thrown out on the on on Christmas Eve and I had nowhere to go. I went into a train just to keep warm in London. Back and forth. Back and forth. The social workers, they told me they can't help me in a way because of my immigration status. They'll have to take the child from me, but it's hard to give your child away. This is Scott Albrecht at the Catholic Worker Farm. Is Father Charles available? I just received a phone call from St. Albans Police Station and she has a woman with her uh, from Botswana. She said she knew Father Charles. Oh, you know her? Oh, you do? Because um, basically she's uh, homeless now and um, she's been sleeping on a, um, a train or a bus or something for the last three nights. Probably the police will bring her over here and uh, we'll put her in the mother and baby house. Oh my God. Hello. 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 here for five months and uh, we have a cooking schedule every woman cooks once a week and today is my day to cook so I am making pasta sauce uh, tomato sauce I'm making uh, potatoes and I am making steamed veg and I will be making pasta a bit later when we are ready to eat closer to dinner so yes, I have been working very hard. <laughs> Bless you and thank you for this day and we thank you for this food. And we ask you to be with Marion who made the food for us. We ask you to give her your peace and help her with her asylum application. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Hear our prayer. My name is Scott Albrecht and I'm from the Catholic Worker Farm. The Catholic Worker Farm has been running for over 11 years, during which time we have taken in over 500 women and children and given them food, accommodation, uh, gotten them GPs, psychotherapists, and free dental work, and many, many other things. She was upset. It's Christmas. Eh? We've received many women from war-torn countries, places like Libya, Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, the Congo, while at the same time we've been selling weapons to those countries. Take the Congo, for example. Over 5.1 million people have died there. 40,000 people die each month in the eastern Congo. The average life expectancy of a Congolese woman is 47 years. Many women are, are tortured, and uh, it's a terrible, terrible situation. And when they come to the UK, they find that, that there's no one to help them, and they end up on the streets. My name is Miriam and I came here from Sweden to be a volunteer at the farm. I can say that I came here to try and live in community 
And there are loads and loads of things that I like about this place. I love being able to be outside and work with my body instead of sitting inside in front of a computer all day, even though we do that just a little bit as well. Quite common, isn't it, that people go and do volunteer work for a year and then that's just something that they do for a year. But I really think of it more as a lifestyle and I would like to do it something like this for the rest of my life. I think it's important because we have, as human beings, we have basic needs like food and accommodation and security. And before they come here, they don't have that. They don't know where they're going to spend the next night. And they don't know if they're going to have enough food, some of them at least. Well, all right, let's She's go. Yeah. Oh, I Yay. almost forgot. Give mouse grub out. I can't even explain because I don't think anybody could have done this for me. Because um, uh, when I was homeless, you ring so many organizations here. We can't give you food, but they can't give you somewhere to stay. Because uh, I remember one time I gave up. I said, I'm fed up, I can't be going up and down with a small child. And they said, no, you have to fight, you have to fight. I said, yeah, I have to fight when I have somewhere to sleep. You understand? You can't be fighting when you're walking up and down with a child. Kitty, help mommy. Yeah, Demaris just got leave to remain. She and her little boy Idris uh, are from Kenya. For nine years, they were homeless and we took them in about a year ago. So when I came here, I got address, so I could go to our solicitor and say, this is where I live. There are an estimated 387,500 destitute asylum seekers. They're not allowed to work. Uh, they're not allow allowed to collect state benefits. And so that forces them into poverty deep poverty, some turn to prostitution, um, some to theft, some, some sleep on the bendy buses uh, in London, and, um, and a lot of them, many of them, do what's called sofa surfing. Um, they sleep on other people's sofas until that hospitality wears thin, and then people say, look, you can no longer stay at my house, you've been sleeping on my sofa for two months, you know, you need to move on. And they get kicked out, and they go to places like the British Red Cross, and other refugee services. And I get, we get, you know, four, four phone calls a day sometimes saying we have a woman and a baby who's homeless. Can you please give them accommodation? We have a single woman from um, Ethiopia, please. She's been sleeping in a park. Can you help her? And um, sadly, we don't have enough space to take everyone. What I really liked with living here was the, the variety of what we were doing. Like one day we could be working really hard in the garden, digging or sowing seeds, planting things, and you would see them grow. And the other day I could be accompany, accompanying <laughs> some of the uh, women to, to a migration solicitor and really try to work on their case and to help them to be able to stay in this country. Many of the people that, that want to come here uh, are attracted by our garden and uh, the thought of you know, uh, growing your own vegetables and then laying them out on table, cooking them or not cooking them and eating them yourself is very appealing to people. We grow our own vegetables. Um, we grow garlic and courgettes and tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, many, many things. Lettuce, uh, broccoli, cauliflower. And uh, we use that for our own table and for the table at Mary House. Sometimes we use the produce from the garden to make jams and sauces and things to sell. And uh, we also sometimes sell things that we've been given 
and this is to we do it in St. Albans to raise money and also to spread the word and just be there, be present and talk to people. And I think people really appreciate that, that we grow the food, we bring it to St. Albans, uh, the women help us to prepare it and then we sell it and then that money goes back into the farm to help, help us to buy things like, um, uh, you know, heating oil or milk. Actually, before I came here, I was thinking, do they have enough food here on this farm? Um, it's only donation and I heard that they were going dumpster diving and I have never done that in my life. But, um, and then I see how much there has been throwing out from supermarkets, Tesco, places, restaurants, and uh, who is actually, its food is actually very nice. We, we can use it and we can, we can eat it just because it's last day. It is not, uh, it's still possible to eat. Ouch. Because for me, for me, I'm sitting here. They changed my life. Big, big one, they changed my life. Because if I think my life I've been living, I live a rough life. I lived my life in London for the past six years. And I've been there with friends, different people, staying with different, different people and different environments as well. So it's like my life was just like moving from one house to another. Yes, pampas. That's the pampas there. Yeah. For me to be here, I can say it's a really is the grace of God, and I can say it's a blessing because um, since I've been here, things have been my life is just comfortable. My life is steady, I could say, because the people they think that you never survive in this country they're using you abusing you working for people i work for people like a mad people i work the, at the end of the amount you're giving me 40 pounds 50 pounds which i can work for nine hours a week you know but because you don't have a status people just use you and abuse you anyhow can you go to the police and report you cannot you cannot go to the police and report because if you go there, they will ask you, why is your stay? Why are you doing this? When they know you don't have a status to take advantage, African people, that's the way they behave anyway. So when I came to this camp, to um, Maple Coast, Mary House, my life changed. When there came a traveler to stay, the rich man refused to take one of his own flock or herd to provide for the wayfarer who had come to him. Instead, he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for his guest. David's anger flared up against the man. As the Lord lives, he said to Nathan, the man who did this deserves to die. He must make fourfold restitution for the lamb for doing such a thing and showing no compassion. Then Nathan said to David, you are the man. The Catholic Worker was started in the United States in the 1930s by a woman named Dorothy Day and a man named Peter Morin. And uh, together they decided to explode the dynamite of Catholic social teaching. We have 70,000 papers going out every month to different parts of the country and all over the world, uh, expressing not just a sense of charity. The word charity is something that sticks in people's throats. but trying to write in the paper, we're all trying to write about it, another kind of a social order in which uh, men are truly brothers, in which by mutual aid, by decentralization, by practicing what the popes call the principle of subsidiarity, which is uh, quite contrary to the kind of welfare state we have, by doing these things we have built up another social order in which men are given an opportunity to develop their capacities, their talents, their abilities, and, and don't have to go around selling their labor and uh, suffering this degradation and the shame of unemployment. And then um, finally they felt they needed to open up a house for homeless people. It was called the House of Hospitality. At the house they, they were just taking people in off the streets, people who had fallen on hard times. And uh, since then, there have been about 180 
different houses of hospitality throughout the world. We're, we're just two of them here. We get phone calls from agencies like the Red Cross or the South Old Black Sister or Jesuit Refugee Services. They call us and ask us if we have spaces available when someone comes to them who is homeless. So then if we have a space and they fill the criteria, if they're women and if they don't have any recourse to public funds, then they can come here and stay. And we'll be providing all the food you need, and we'll help you with your asylum claim. Okay. And uh, don't worry, we'll take good care of you and your little boy. I'd spoken to social services and they'd literally said that they couldn't help her, they could take the child, they couldn't take her, and I'm a mother, yeah. and I wouldn't give my child up. The, the only option which they had was to take him. And they can't help me, but they can help him. Then I just said, if that's the case, I'm happy to sleep under the tree with my son. It's okay. You can't. I, couldn't, I, can't, I can't give him away. I can't. And when they come here, they're, of course, very sad. And this is their only opportunity to, to maybe to have accommodation, to have a roof, to have food. Um, and that is what we are actually providing for them, food and a roof, but most of all we are trying to make them welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> now I think it's like my life has started after 10 years. This is my first letter. Oh. <laughs> I feel like I'm somehow happy that I can, I can help uh, giving them this welcome and let them know that, that it's not all people who is cruel to them and, and that we can help them further in their, in their way to, to become more independent again and to, be, yeah, to see um, no. So I can never be, you know, a Congolese woman fleeing from rape and torture and violence. I can only be a white working class guy that tries the best he can to live alongside of people who have been raped and tortured. And um, to try every day to give as much as, of my life as I can. Voices I am shy, but you can reach me. 